Hi, and welcome to assignment number two for PIDP 3100, prepared for Alison Dewhurst by Shelley Kwame MacDonald. We're going to take a look at the humanistic theory of adult learning in a quick presentation. Let's take a look at what we'll cover today. We're going to take a quick look at the history of the theory and the main theorists. We'll take a look at the roles of the educator and the student. Next, we'll cover a few of the pros and cons of the theory. And finally, we'll take a look at the resources and references I used while completing the assignment. Please note that all the resources are referenced within the slides themselves, and I may not read them off with each slide. You can check out the resources at the end of the presentation. Humanism, with roots dating back to Greek and Latin days, has been around for a long time. It really took off in the 1950s when Abraham Maslow, Carl Rogers, Malcolm Knowles, and others furthered the humanistic approach to learning as a response to the, quote, mechanistic and impersonal nature of learning predetermined by the teacher arranging the environment to elicit certain behavior, unquote, that was characterized by behavioralism. We see a lovely summary of the approach here. We can see that the theory encompasses much more than just throwing data at a person and expecting them to absorb it. So that leads us to the main theorists who furthered the studies and research into the humanistic approach to adult education. Although there were many who contributed to the advancement of the theory, I will look at only three of them. Abraham Maslow, Carl Rogers, and Malcolm Knowles. Maslow is, of course, most famous for his hierarchy of needs pyramid. Starting with the physiological needs of food, water, and shelter, humans are not motivated to move up the pyramid until they have had all of these needs met and mastered. Let's face it, if you were hungry, you would not be interested in finding new friends, unless, of course, they could find you some supper. When humans had met and mastered all of their needs, they would be at the top of the pyramid at self-actualization. Carl Rogers was well known for his principles of experiential learning. He believed that learning is self-initiated by the learner, learning is part of personal development, and all humans have a natural ability to learn. Learning is pervasive and changes behavior. The learner evaluates and determines the success of their learning and as the learner is involved with all parts of the learning, the reason why was built right into the curriculum. He was also responsible for the concept of lifelong learning. Although Malcolm Knowles did not term the phrase andragogy, he was considered responsible for popularizing it in North America. Andragogy is the study of how adults learn and include both formal and informal learning settings. He had five assumptions. As the learner matures, they move from dependency to self-direction. Life experiences as the learner grows are excellent tools for learning. An adult's readiness to learn changes as they change social roles and priorities. Adults want their learning to be applicable to their immediate environment and adults' motivation changes from external to internal as they mature. Now that we know the main movers and shakers in the industry, let's see what the roles of the teacher and the student are. In the humanistic perspective, the educator is not the content expert, but rather a facilitator or guide. As we can see in the quote on the slide, the role of the teacher is very broad and yet specific. Let's go take a look at the role of the student. The student plays a very active part in planning, executing, and evaluating their learning. They determine what they want to learn, how do they want to learn, and when are they satisfied that they have learned enough. The learning is specific and individualized to each student. A main point to remember is that the student needs to know why they are learning and tie that back to real life scenarios. That's where the role of the educator comes in. Let's go take a look at some of the pros and cons of the theory. So some pros. First off, the student is highly involved in the learning process, so should be very motivated. Learning is individualized, so the learner will not be forced to learn something they don't want to learn. This can also be a con for the educator, 
as they will not be able to create a course that's a one-size-fits-all. Courses will have to be adapted and customized as the student progresses through. It will mean a little bit more work for the educator. Student remains the responsible authority, not the educator. Now some cons. The concept is very vague and it's hard to obtain key metrics as testing is not typically emphasized. There's definitely not a one size fits all format. Now we're on to the resources and references that I used and I'll let you take a look on these two slides on your own time. Thanks for learning a little bit about the humanistic approach to adult learning.